The marketplace is a riot of colors and sounds. Sun-bleached awnings stretch over stalls piled high with exotic fruits, rolls of vibrantly dyed silks, and gleaming brass trinkets. The air thrums with a mix of languages, sharp haggling from merchants, sailors' laughter rising above the squawk of parrots. Amidst this organized chaos stands Maya, her dark hair woven with strings of turquoise beads that jingle softly as she moves. While her eyes spark with curiosity, a hint of nervousness lingers around her brow. Her father, a warm-faced man with weathered hands, beckons Maya closer to his stall, piled high with fragrant spices. Now, Maya, remember what I taught you. Two pinches of cardamom for every measure of nutmeg. It brings out the sweetness. I know, father. I'm listening. She carefully scoops out spices, trying her best to focus, but her attention drifts with the swirl of the crowd. A troop of fire eaters passes, drawing amazed gasps and children's gleeful shouts. Maya smiles longingly, wishing she could break away for just a moment. Suddenly, a rude customer, a large man with a silk turban and a scowl, barrels into the stall, sending several jars of paprika tumbling. Out of my way, clumsy girl. Do you want to ruin my new robes? These silks are from across the Western Sea. I'm so sorry, sir. It was an accident. Her cheeks burn hot with embarrassment. Before she can pick up the spilled spices, the rude customer leans closer, his face twisted in disgust. Not just clumsy, but careless too. Your kind brings nothing but misfortune. Maya flinches as if struck, the harsh words cutting deeper than she'd like to admit. As a child, she learned she wasn't like other girls. A quick flash of anger, a pang of fear, and things surrounding her sometimes reacted. Heat prickles behind her eyes. The world seems to tilt slightly, and Maya feels a surge of unfamiliar energy coursing through her veins. She wills herself to be calm, to be still, but it's too late. With a sharp crackle, a basket of oranges beside the stall suddenly lifts off the ground, bobbing in the air. A gas ripples through the market. Then a spoon levitates inches above her father's head, twirling gently, casting a flickering reflection in his bewildered eyes. The rude customer backs away, a mix of fear and outrage twisting his features. Witchcraft! I knew it! This girl is cursed! The bustling market grinds to a halt. Faces Maya once thought friendly now stare with a mixture of suspicion and outright fear. The accusation of witchcraft hangs heavy in the air. Someone in the crowd yells, seize her, while a mother snatches her child away from the spectacle. Panic rises in Maya's throat, her father stepping in front of Maya. She's no witch, have you no pity? It's an, an ailment, that's all. But his voice lacks conviction. Even he looks shaken by the display. The rude customer seizes his moment. An ailment that destroys honest merchants' goods? No, mark my words, this girl is an instrument of dark forces. A wave of superstitious agreement swells through the crowd. They press closer, fingers pointing. A few pick up stones, their eyes hardening. Father, I didn't mean to. I can't control it. But her words are lost in the rising clamor. Just as a hurled stone whizzes past her ear, Maya feels that now familiar surge of frantic energy. Larger things react. A bag of flour bursts open, its contents billowing in a white cloud. A cart piled high with pottery tips precariously, then crashes to the cobblestones. Screams mingle with shouts of, Witch! Monster! The mob closes in, Maya trapped in the eye of the storm she unintentionally created. Desperate, she turns to her father, only to find a look of helpless horror mirrored in his eyes. Suddenly, a voice cuts through the fear. Leave her alone. The crowd jostles as a figure pushes through. It's a young man, not much older than Maya, with the lean build of an acrobat and a mischievous glint in his eyes. 
The roar of the market has faded, replaced by the damp quiet of a narrow alleyway. Maya huddles against a crumbling stone wall, sobs racking her body. Tears mingle with the flower still clinging to her skin, leaving salty streaks on her cheeks. Monster, witch, they were right. Why me? Why can't I just be normal? A stray cat approaches warily, sniffing at her outstretched hand. It's a moment of bleak connection, both of them unwanted, outcast in their own way. Then a shadow falls across her. Footsteps, light and agile, not the menacing stomp of a mob. Maya tenses, then slowly lifts her head. At the alley's entrance stands the young man from the market, the one who'd called for the crowd to stop. Mind if I join you? Looks a bit lonely in here. His tone is light, but his eyes hold a genuine concern. Something about him softens the tight knot of dread in Maya's chest. What do you want? Come to gloat? Join the others in throwing stones? Young man shrugs, then sits casually beside her gnaw. Stones are so predictable. Besides, the show back there? That was impressive, in a chaotic sort of way. Her eyes widen in surprise. Is he mocking me? Yet his playful smirk doesn't hold malice. My name's Kai. I travel with a small circus troupe. See a lot of unusual acts, but nothing quite like spontaneous levitating pottery. Ever thought about putting those talents to use? Talents? This is a curse. Everyone hates me, fears me. Maybe fear isn't always a bad thing. Fear and awe, sometimes they blur together. Wouldn't you say? He gestures back toward the marketplace, where the sounds of the angry mob have finally died down. People get riled up by what they don't understand, but offer them a spectacle, a touch of controlled magic. Suddenly that fear turns into a thrill. They want to see more. You? You really think so? I know so. It's all about how you frame it. He holds out his hand, calloused yet gentle. A flicker of hope battles the lingering despair in Maya's heart. Maya and Kai meet secretly by the docks to train. He helps her channel her emotions to control the levitations. Friendship blossoms. Kai sees beyond her chaotic gift to the girl within. Moonlight paints the water a shimmering silver. The only sounds are the lapping of waves against old wooden piers and the distant call of a night bird. Maya sits hunched on a stack of crates, the anxiety clear in her posture. So, ready to take on the world of controlled chaos? More like ready to survive the next time someone throws a rotten cabbage at me. Kai drops to the ground beside her, his movements fluid and graceful. It starts with understanding. That surge you feel, it's not all bad. It's energy, potential. But like a wild horse, it needs to be tamed, not fought. Easy to say. No, not easy at all. What scares you the most? The things flying or the feeling of losing control? Maya chews her lip, then forces the words out. It's being seen as different, feared. It makes me feel so alone. Kai nods, a flash of understanding crossing his face. Then focus on that feeling. Not the anger, not the panic, but the ache of loneliness. Let it fuel you. He picks up a smooth pebble, holding it out to Maya. Channel that into the pebble. Don't think about lifting it. Think about connecting with it. Maya stares at the pebble, disbelief warring with desperation. She closes her eyes, remembering the sting of hurtful words, the isolation of being an outcast. A warmth spreads through her hand, tingling against the stone, and then impossibly it lifts. Just an inch, wobbly and uncertain, but it hovers. Maya gasps, tears welling up. But these are tears of awe, not despair. Kai watches, not with the smug satisfaction of a teacher, but a shared spark of wonder. You see, it's not just magic, Maya, it's you. Over the following nights, they practice in secret. Some nights, it's just leaf fluttering at her command. 
Others end in frustration with a flower sack exploding when Maya's concentration slips. Yet Kai's faith never wavers. His playful jokes ease the tension, and he shares stories of other performers he's met, those celebrated for their differences. One night, as they watch the first sliver of dawn break over the harbor, Maya finally voices the question bubbling within her. Why are you doing this, Kai? Helping me? I'm still a... a freak. Maybe. But what I see is a girl with untapped strength and a spark fiercer than any levitating teapot. Besides, freaks always find each other, don't they? They share a hesitant smile, and in that smile blooms a tentative friendship built on a foundation of trust and acceptance. Kai convinces Maya to perform a simple levitating act in his street show. Initially hesitant, Maya is empowered by the crowd's wonder and applause. Some still fear her, but there's an undercurrent of admiration. The market isn't as crowded as the day of the disaster, but a sizable audience has gathered in a wide circle. These are curious onlookers, not a bloodthirsty mob. Still, Maya can feel the tension coiling in her stomach as she peeks out from behind a brightly painted juggler's wagon. Showtime, levitating lady. Remember, just like we practiced. One step at a time. But what if it goes wrong? What if they... What if they see something extraordinary? What if they feel a flicker of what you feel when you make that pebble dance? Trust me, Maya. Her heart pounding, Maya steps into the circle. Kai, in his colorful acrobat's outfit, draws the crowd's attention with a series of tumbling runs and handstands. Then he gestures dramatically toward Maya. For your amazement, my friends, a feat unlike any you've witnessed. A maiden who commands the very air. Whispers ripple through the crowd, intrigued murmurs with a hint of wary excitement. Maya takes her place in the center. Someone at the back snorts, witchcraft, but their voice is quickly shooshed. Eyes wide, Maya focuses on a brightly colored ball lying innocently on the cobblestones. She remembers Kai's words, connect, don't command. A breath shudders out of her, and then slowly, impossibly, the ball lifts. It bobs gently, as if in an unseen breeze. A collective gasp echoes through the square. Maya feels a tremor run through her, but pushes it down, concentrating fiercely. The ball spins faster, then floats higher, weaving playfully above Maya's head. A ripple of applause starts tentatively, then builds in volume. A child laughs in pure delight, eyes filled with wonder. Yet not everyone is clapping. On the fringe of the crowd, a group of elders watches with furrowed brows, whispering their fears to one another. Maya glances at them, doubt creeping back in. The ball wobbles dangerously, threatening to fall. Then she catches Kai's gaze from the edge of the circle. He gives her a quick, encouraging nod. Taking a deep breath, Maya reignites that spark of defiance, the sting of being labeled a monster fueling her focus. The ball rises smoothly once more, and with a flourish, Maya guides it gently to the outstretched hand of the awestruck child. Thunderous applause washes over her. Not everyone claps, some slip away, fear still twisting their features. But others linger, watching her with a strange new glint in their eyes. Not hatred, but an uncomfortable mix of fear and admiration. A visiting nobleman becomes obsessed with Maya's power, Seeing her as a tool, he spreads rumors of her being a threat, hoping to capture her. Kai and Maya realize they must escape his greedy reach. The tavern is filled with raucous laughter and the pungent smell of cheap ale. Kai and Maya sit in a shadowed corner, picking at a plate of bread and olives earned from Maya's now regular levitation act. But the joy of performance has faded. I saw him again today the nobleman in the velvet robes. He was staring at me from across the square, a smile on his face like a hungry cat. We won't stay here for long, I promise. A few more coins and we'll be heading south with the caravan. 
They won't find you there. Suddenly, a heavyset man with a scarred face stumbles over to their table. I overheard, you're the girl who can make things fly. Entertain us then. Show us some real magic. His companions bellow encouragement, pounding their fists on the table. Maya shrinks back, a wave of nausea washing over her. She's learned to perform on cue, but not like this as a drunken sideshow. I don't, I'm not feeling well. Before Kai can intervene, the nobleman himself steps out of the shadows. Tall and slender, his velvet robes gleam even in the dim tavern light. Ah, yes, the infamous levitating lady. It seems my reputation precedes me. His voice is smooth, yet with an underlying tension, Maya's senses scream at her to heed. Perhaps we could take this performance somewhere more private. Maya's state is in need of unique entertainment. His eyes rove over Maya, not with the innocent wonder of a child, but with the calculating glint of a predator. Kai tenses, his hand moving protectively toward Maya's shoulder. The lady isn't interested. Now, if you would excuse us, who are you to speak for her, street urchin? Know your place. This girl, she possesses gifts that would elevate her far above the likes of you. Maya swallows hard. She understands the threat beneath the enticing words. This isn't patronage. It's a gilded cage. The nobleman would exploit her unusual talent, twisting it for his own power plays or twisted amusement. Fear coils in her belly, but it sparks a defiant anger too. Kai sees it in her eyes, a hardening of her resolve. He stands slowly, meeting the nobleman's gaze. She goes where she chooses. Now get out of our sight before my friends here show you exactly how street urchins treat those who disrespect us. The threat sparks a dangerous tension. The nobleman hesitates, then laughs darkly. You've spunk, boy, I'll give you that. But be warned, I don't take rejection lightly, and that little witch won't be running from her destiny forever. With a final sinister smile, the nobleman turns and melts back into the crowd. Kai and Maya flee the city, leaving behind her old life of ostracism. They join a traveling circus troupe, providing Maya further performance outlets. Using her abilities purposefully brings newfound self-acceptance. A battered old wagon rattles along a dusty track, dawn breaking over the arid landscape. Maya sits huddled beside Kai on the driver's bench, exhaustion etched on her face. But as the first rays of sun touch the horizon, a flicker of excitement replaces the weary apprehension in her eyes. So, south it is? What wonders await us there, maestro? Friendly markets, vibrant cities, even Sultan's palaces if we play our cards right. You might need to conjure me up a more impressive title than Maestro, though. He winks, the easy humor lightening the air between them. But there's an urgency, too, a hint of looking over their shoulders as if expecting pursuit at any moment. Later, as the scorching midday sun forces them to rest beneath a lone acacia tree, the reason for their haste becomes clear. A rider appears on the horizon, the gleam of polished armor suggesting a nobleman's guard. Maya clutches Kai's arm, but the rider passes at a distance without breaking stride. Looks like we timed it right. He won't follow us so far into the wastelands. We're truly free now, Maya. But something in his voice makes her look closer. It's not just relief she sees on his face. There's a hint of sadness as well. Kai... Don't you miss it? Your friends, the acrobatics? This was never your choice to run. Kai shrugs, trying for lightness, but failing to hide the pang of truth in her words. Yeah, sometimes. But a few cartwheels aren't worth seeing you trapped like a caged bird. Besides, who said I can't be the greatest levitating object juggler of all time? You provide the float, I'll provide the flare. The absurdity of his statement makes Maya laugh, and the tension slowly dissipates. Days turn into weeks. They join a ragtag traveling circus, a motley crew of fire breathers, strong men, and a dancing bear with surprisingly gentle eyes. 
At first, some eye Maya warily, their old superstitions flaring. But when Kai incorporates Maya's ability into their main performance, her levitations weaving magical light patterns as acrobats tumble in the air, the awe outweighs the fear. The applause Maya receives now isn't tinged with suspicion. It's genuine appreciation for her skill, her art. Every evening, as she channels her emotions not into destructive surges, but measured control, she feels something within her healing. This isn't just escape, it's transformation. The nobleman and his guards track them down, demanding Maya's service. Maya draws on her training, using her levitation skills defensively. Villagers she helped before arrive, turning the tide against the greedy noble. The air crackles with the energy of a bustling market. The circus troupe has set up in a small, sun-baked village, drawing an enthusiastic crowd. Maya is center stage, not with fear, but a calm focus. Silver bracelets adorn her wrists, tinkling softly as she directs the flight of brightly colored scarves. No longer clumsy chaos, but controlled artistry. Suddenly, the music from the jugglers falters as a richly dressed figure on horseback charges through the crowd. It's the nobleman, a scowl marring his handsome features. Behind him ride several well-armed guards. You thought you could escape me, witch? Your little tricks won't save you this time. Seize her! Panic breaks out. Villagers scatter, the joyous atmosphere shattering. Kai tries to reach Maya, but guards shove him aside. Such power deserves to be in the hands of someone worthy. Come willingly, and I might show you a touch of mercy. Maya feels the familiar surge, but it's not blind fear anymore. Anger fuels her now, a righteous fury against those who'd manipulate and control. She remembers the cruel taunts, the desperation of hiding away. No more. As the guards close in, Maya flings out her arms. But it's not a gesture of surrender. Ropes meant for binding her wrists snap midair, levitating in defiance. Before the stunned guards can react, Maya channels her focus into the sacks of grain piled next to a merchant's stall. They lift, bursting open, showering the attackers in a swirl of flour that blinds and chokes. Villagers gasp, then hesitant shouts of defiance emerge. Maya seizes her chance. He lies. I'm no witch, just a girl he wants to use. These men want to force me, to steal me away from my friends. Will you let them? Something breaks free then. Not just her latent power, but a courage she didn't know she possessed. She remembers the kind villagers who'd offered a smile or spare crust of bread when she was just a frightened outcast. A wizened farmer, the one she healed a simple cut for during their last visit here, steps forward. A farmer in the crowd says this child helped us. Showed us wonders, yes, but with a kind heart. That fine lord, he speaks only of power and greed. Murmurs of agreement have spread. Suddenly, farmers wielding rakes and blacksmiths with hammers stand protectively beside the acrobats. This isn't her power against theirs, it's community, fueled by something more precious than fear. Outnumbered, the nobleman snarls with disgust. Fine, keep your dancing, witch. But she is marked. I'll reclaim what is rightfully mine. With a promise of vengeance hanging in the air, the nobleman and his men retreat. Maya realizes that even with her unusual ability, she can choose her path. Her relationship with Kai deepens, a bond built on acceptance and trust. Maya remains within the circus, now showcasing her power as a wondrous trick. The firelight casts flickering shadows on the caravan walls. After the excitement of the day, a strange melancholy hangs in the air. Kai finds Maya perched on a water barrel at the edge of the camp, staring pensively into the fading glow of the sunset. Not running this time? That was, well, unexpected and incredibly brave. Brave or maybe foolish. Who knows when that nobleman will reappear with more men? I've put you all in danger. You think anyone here sees it that way? You showed them. Showed yourself, it seems, that you won't cower anymore. He sits beside her, 
The silence stretching until Maya finally voices the question weighing on her. Kai, what now? Do we keep running forever? Is this all my life will ever be? A girl in her floating tricks, one step ahead of someone trying to use me? Kai sighs, then lays a comforting hand on her shoulder. Truthfully, I don't know. Some scars take more than applause to heal. But here's what I do know. You get to choose. Who you are isn't just about dancing scarves. It's that fiery girl who faced down armed bullies, who wouldn't let them take her friends. He pauses, gazing intently into her eyes. And yeah, it's the girl I saw that first day in the alley, lost but with a strength she didn't yet recognize. That's who I choose to see anyway. A bittersweet smile touches Maya's lips. The journey isn't over. The nobleman's threats still lurk, and the fear won't magically disappear. Yet within that uncertainty, there's a newfound conviction. Maybe tricks aren't so bad if I trick the fear into something else. Every night under those spotlights, I can prove that being different isn't a curse to survive, but a wonder to share. They sit in shared silence, watching the first stars twinkle above the desert landscape. Their path remains tangled, but there's a sense of resolve that wasn't there before. After that display, I'd guess a few more of those noble types might consider you a prize worth fighting over. Maybe, or maybe word will spread. The girl who fights back with flower and dancing scarves. And that nobleman, he thrives on those too, afraid to challenge him. That's not me anymore. A flicker of the old fear surfaces, but she meets it head on. It doesn't mean the worry goes away. But now, every morning I wake up, I decide. Stay with the circus, hone my, well, talents, protect this scrappy family we've made, or do something bolder. There are other villages, other markets where someone different might be a beacon. Not a thing to fear. She looks at Kai, the bond between them evident but deepened by newfound respect. Maybe one day it's not just scarves I get to lift. Maybe I help lift up those still hiding in the shadows like I once did. It won't be easy, but it will be my choice. Sounds like less of a trick to me, Maya, and more like the start of your own kind of magic. Though honestly, you might want to avoid levitating angry villagers. That could get complicated. He teases gently, but there's a sincerity in his eyes that makes Maya smile. The path ahead is still uncertain, perhaps more dangerous than ever, but the difference is now she won't face it alone. Later that night, Maya takes to the makeshift stage with newfound purpose. This isn't just about dodging threats. Each swirl of a scarf, each item that floats under her command tells a different story. A story of overcoming fear, of being defiantly and unapologetically different, of refusing to be merely a pawn in someone else's game. Even when whispers from the crowd hint that rumors of her confrontation with the nobleman have spread, she holds her head high. Fear gives way to resolve. There will always be obstacles, those desiring to exploit the extraordinary. But the greatest power of all lies in deciding how you wield your own unique gifts and never surrendering the right to choose your own path.